every once in a while, I um, just kind of randomly pull a game off a shelf uh, when I get a particular hankering for it. And uh, this time it happens to be April's Harvest, which is uh, the Civil War Brigade series from the gamers. Uh, I'm not sure if it's because this is the anniversary of the battle and I suddenly felt compelled to play it. But it was one of those things where I was just sitting there flipping counters and looking at my shelves and thinking, you know what? I haven't played a Civil War Brigade series game in a couple of years, actually. And uh, and I was just thinking, it's April. Hey, let's check, try Shiloh. I've actually never played a tabletop Shiloh game before, um, even though I do have a copy somewhere there next to the... This terrible sound is a fearful slaughter. That's the regimental level. Um, but I didn't feel like tackling something that big, so I grabbed the, uh, the well, it's not, it's not smaller scale, the, I guess a larger scale game, um, or a higher level game, the, the operational view, as opposed to that uh, grand tactical regimental view. So. Um, as you can see here, it's only a single map, which is nice, um, particularly garish. Uh, this was the era of the garish gamers maps. Um, this one's got a lot of trees on it, so it serves to mute the drastic hex-based elevation changes. Um, unlike later gamers entries, uh, such as the Line of Battle series, where uh, Dean Essig, um, who I think has a pretty extensive uh, cartography background, um, he uh, un unhooked the elevation changes from the actual hex grid. So uh, in the line of battle games, the, the, the elevation changes um, are less of a kind of glaring, you know, hex by hex um, they have the less glaring hex by hex obviousness. Um, here, you know, each hex, um, where an elevation changes, it's all bound to the hex grid. So it gives it this very geometric look, which again, you can't see particularly well in here because of the trees, but you can see, um, where I can try and avoid glare, um, is the fairly drastic color difference where you've got this really garish red. Um, it's really, it looks red on the camera here, but it's actually much more orange and sort of a deep burnt orange at the highest elevations there. Um, it's just, I'm not sure why that color was chosen for the, the higher elevations. Um, it looks very bizarre on this map. So, uh, you know, the line of battle maps were much, much more, um, and much more muted in their color tone. They also have many more levels of elevation, which is uh, kind of a blessing and a curse. You can get some real good detail from that, but it becomes a nightmare to try and visually identify, you know, the 15 different levels of, of uh, elevation in the line of battle series. Here, you've only got seven levels of elevation, so a little more manageable. Um, but uh, I've got it set up, and uh, as you can see, the Union forces are all your purple and blue, various shades. Um, the Confederates are all over here in this corner, and they're the various butternut and gray units. Um, I'm not using the rules that came with it. I've actually printed out off of the Gamers Archive website um, the uh, last version of the rules that was done for the series, uh, which was 3.2. Uh, the nice thing about the, the PDF file on the website is that it's in color, so you get uh, you know, a nice color copy of the rules. I've stuck this in um, some page covers uh, to make it easier to flip through um, when I'm referencing the rules, which I will be doing frequently since I haven't played one of these in a long time. Uh, 
the, the rules are not particularly difficult. Um, there, for the Brigade series, there's a lot of dice rolling, um, and you have to roll a lot of dice on a combat. Oh, and the other thing, uh, the, the charts and tables that were in there, also in color, um, I printed them out on cardstock uh, to have as a handy reference. Um, so it's kind of nice to have their morale table. Um, but uh, if I recall correctly, you they, they recommend rolling a bunch of your dice together um, all at once to, to get all the different uh, morale rolls, straggler rolls, combat results, etc., etc. You're rolling a big handful of dice for each combat, and there is a lot of combat for each combat, so it's fairly detailed. Um, for me, the most complex thing about it was managing the brigade strengths as they start to lose, uh, the brigade sizes um, as they start to lose strength, uh, because you have these extended lines, and I can just set the camera down at this point since we'll zoom in on the pieces. Um, is that you have these extended lines, uh, which you can see that's what these guys are here, the little arrows. Um, you do this to increase the frontage of your brigade uh, and make them, you know, make a more coherent defensive line. But as they start to take damage, um, their size changes. And on the back here, uh, you can see like the AA or whatever. It'll start to it'll go to AB and then... B and then maybe even C. I, I feel like the, the 3.2 rules um, changed that a little bit. Um, I think it, elim it kind of eliminated all the C's, but um, I need to read them again and to make sure. So um, just to look here at the tactical situation, all these Union camps, uh, except a couple of the units, are encamped and unalerted. So the Confederates basically are going to come flying in here and just beat the shit out of all of these guys that are sitting here in camp. So the Union position is going to collapse back pretty quickly. You can see the hornet's nest there. Um, they're going to collapse back pretty quickly to kind of a defensive line along the Hamburg Road and try and hold that uh, until evening when Buell's uh, army arrives, the Army of the Ohio. So um, that's the position that it starts at. Uh, I will get it underway and maybe come back with some uh, some recap videos as I go along. I'm playing the full scenario, so uh, this will be going for quite a while. Definitely longer. I'll have it set up much longer than the actual battle of uh, two days was fought. So. Uh, 